Yeah, I looked this morning and Dave McKeegan took down that video that he did on us. Wow. Yeah, so I was wondering if you had a discussion with him over a private email or... No, I haven't spoken to him. I haven't emailed him, but I think uh, a lot of people were pointing out some of the errors in his uh, video. Like he was trying too hard to uh, impress the hoax believers. <laughs> I was just looking at it. I didn't know he put another video up, but he put another one up trying to explain all of the stuff from Joyce Deaver. And of course, all of her documents are gone. So whatever they put up to replace it, he's just using updated files. Okay, but explain the AULA site. Tell everybody here what happened with that AULA site so they understand. Right after we posted the article on Aulis with the links to the Joyce Deaver's PDF files on the documents, they were immediately removed. And all of Joyce Deaver's 56 PDF files over her 1991 to 2005 experiments at the Glenn Research Center, you can now buy them, but you can't visibly see them. But you have to put in who you are and what you are, whether you're a teacher or you're an enthusiast or whatever, right? And of course, they're going to give you a redacted version. It doesn't matter what you put in there. You're going to be very careful that the original documents are no longer going to be available. Of course, anything that David put up on that one video, he refers to the experiments not being done at Glenn Research Center, but at the ISS. I believe that the original document showed that they were being both done at the research center and at the ISS. The original we had up there on the AULA site that was taken down, that picture of those materials that were outgassing, that was the ones that Joyce Deaver did. That was not the one on the space station. Right, and you can even see the angle on it. They're a similar product, but the difference in the angle and what was posted in her PDF file is the one I snapped out of there and the other one is always on the angle and you can't correct that no. even though they look the same they are quite different have you still got those original documents no I don't I okay. only took the pictures up and then it was posted to the thing right and then all you get is uh, four pages on that but you have the original picture that was taken on those yes. slides that you sent me that's the yes. original that's the original. So I yep. still have. That's right. And I have the original on there. But the other thing is, is Dave says there's no mention of a vacuum. Well, why the hell would you <laughs> do it at the Glenn Research Center if you're not testing it for a vacuum? Why would you take it to the ISS if you're not testing it for vacuum? Just because the document doesn't mention it because all of that stuff about vacuum has been removed from the documents, then you don't need to do that. But on top of that, if they're just talking about VUV radiation and stuff like that in the documents now, well, it's below the Van Allen belt, so it's well protected. The documents has no relevance to any of the so-called testing that was done. And the other thing that, that Dave had mentioned, of course, is buzz. Like, he likes to do this with Buzz. We're going to pull Buzz up here. And there's Buzz right there. We'll make him full screen, and we'll just pull that right in there. Now, you can see the angle here, and his PLSS pack is right up against the door frame. And yep. the door frame is the same thickness as the door, about four inches thick, sitting there. The PLSS is 10 inches deep from his back out to the thing on it. 26 inches high and 18 inches wide. And it's right there, right up against the door frame. And at this angle, with that console sticking in, and it does stick in about 15 inches, there are sections of it that fold up to about 10 inches where the joysticks controllers are. But at this angle, you would be able to see the console right there. Okay, if there's a 10 inch protuberance, it would be affected by it. You would be leaning forward by 10 inches. It physically would have to be in, at that angle, he'd have to be in 10 more inches, which is the same thickness as the PLSS is. And there's no way that he is 10 inches inside the door frame. You can see where his feet are. They're outside the door frame. This is right up against the door frame. And there's absolutely no way that would happen. 
No, I think that's one of the most damning pieces of evidence around. Because nobody's ever proved that it's not correct what we say. That that is a model. That is a practice session. It's just a shell. All they needed was just the frame of the vehicle, so the ladder, so they could come down for the photo shoot. Yep. You would see that console in there. It's as yep. thick as this is. So there's and no way that he is inside a real lunar module. Nope, absolutely not. Stage prop with nothing in it. Yep. And if there's nothing in it, there's, there's no controls. They don't need to have an engine in there. They don't need to have anything in there. They lower it down on a crane. You don't get a blast crater. <laughs> no, no blast crater. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Yeah, it goes right back to the no blast crater. And there's yeah. an example why if it doesn't have a console, it doesn't need an engine. Well, you couldn't fire the engine without the console operating. So that is one and done in one photograph shows that it's just a stage prop, nothing else going. And of course, Robert said this cable coming up there is probably to have an inside light. Yeah. Well, it's one of the things which you've said before, Scott, is continuity error. The errors in simulation are just unbelievable when you start looking at them. Just continuous, ongoing simulation errors. The other thing Dave makes is he keeps talking about, because he's a parrot, and he keeps talking about the special film. Oh, the special film, yes, yes. Nobody's yeah. ever said what it is. Remember, Marcus, last week we were discussing that film. Remember, I purchased that panchromatic 2300 series S-Star film at 35 bucks a roll, and I purchased 10 rolls of that. And those were the very first ones that we subjected to the vacuum chamber. Now, one experiment was put the undeveloped film inside the camera, place it in the chamber, leave it there 24 hours, cycle it three times, take it out. The next one was put it in the camera, stick it in the chamber 24 hours, and that was the one where the film went in with the photos already taken. That's two experiments. Yep. Then the other ones were all conducted with the film outside of the camera in the chamber. So there was four experiments that were done there all in one shot, just over a few days. So the ones that I have been posting are the ones that Scott and I did together and we took that out of the chamber and that was the second experiment. That was the one where the camera went in the chamber, the photos had not been taken yet and when we subjected that to 24 hours of vacuum, three cycles, and when we developed that film, that was the film that was very, very weak. Uh, you could hardly see the photograph in the picture without putting it through the scanning system first. But the photographs still had fog in them. Yeah, they did. And that's the point. It didn't matter what experiment we did, the film had fog in it. And that's just a tiny amount of vacuum that it's being yeah. subjected to. Talk at 10 to the minus 3, which is basically at the common line. Right. What Dave and the parrots are saying is that all we did was prove that the photos could be taken in a vacuum. Well, the thing is, is what they don't seem to understand is when we did the S-Star 100, of which they say is garden variety film, which it is not because it's the backing. That's yeah. the backing of the film. It's nothing to do with that emulsion. The emulsions are the, either they're going to be fine grain, coarse grain, or they're going to be super fine grain. You're not going to get all these different emulsions because you can't harden it. It will not work. You won't get a picture. It's the backing. It's the plastic backing. That's the Estar material. And those guys don't seem to understand that. So when you take this Estar film that we took, the color film, and we subjected that to the same thing. We took the pictures, took the whole camera, put it in the chamber, subjected it to 24 hours, three cycles, out it went. Then we took the control roll and just did the same thing and developed both rolls in the same tank at the same time. So they cannot claim that these films were done at different times in a different solution and that's why you have all these different hues going wild. So Dave said the experiment had a problem with it 
because we were subjecting it to a heat lamp in one of the experiments. And he says, well, of course, that's going to change the emulsion. Yes, but that's what happened on the lunar surface. Look at the camera. Look at the sun is hitting that camera. And it heats up instantly. There's no such thing as just cold to hot. It's instant. That camera is hot. Dave's using an updated file claiming the lunar surface heats up the same as it does like the morning sun does on the Earth. NASA puts out the file just to confuse these people. The main point he was making was that you could still take a photograph. The thing is, they don't seem to understand is that the tint is all gone. The colors are washed out. Yeah. At the common line, it's not very high into space. So this is what he doesn't seem to understand, and none of them understand this, is what are those photos going to look like when you subject that to an environment on the moon where the Tor level is 10 to the minus 11 to 12? That's what they don't understand. So if this is what happens at Tor 10 to the minus 3, what do you think is going to happen to that film at Tor 10 to the minus 11? That's the point that they fail to recognize. They don't want to recognize it. They don't want to understand it. Because if they did understand it, as we do, having done the experiments as you have, you were very careful with those experiments to make sure you got it absolutely spot on, they would have to admit that what you are saying is correct. That a vacuum at that level, toward 10 to the minus 11, toward 10 to the minus 12, will have a serious detrimental effect on a photograph. This is what we've been saying from the start. You have to keep the film under a degree of pressure to preserve its integrity in a camera. And that's what two of the three times that photographic film was used in space the hexagon spiral satellite, the lunar orbiter, and Apollo, the only times they've been used in space, two of them, the hexagon and the lunar orbiter, had pressurized containers for the film and the cameras. And did temperature control as well. March to the Moon claims that these are original scans from the original magazines. And now we're going to have a look at them. We'll start with magazine 36 number, the camera, the lens, and here is the film that was used, right there. ASA 64, American Standards Association, and now referred to as ISO, International Standards Organization. Power reversal. Yeah, transparency material. Right. So now we're going to come and take a look at a photograph. This is the very last photograph of Magazine 36. At the bottom of the screen, here you'll see the overlap when they're so-called taking these right off of the film itself. So the previous photograph is here. The photograph they're shooting with the color, with the photo numbers there, and the next photograph is on top. This is the very last one on the thing. Then you get the color chart, which also says that it is magazine 36. So the previous photograph before it and the previous one after it, you can see that they were bracketing this. But that's the previous photograph right there. So if this is the last one on the magazine, you can see it's bracketed. It's the same picture as this and the same up there on the following one. So they've actually bracketed this. So this image that you're shooting here is not off of magazine 36. It's that's a completely cool. separate magazine. And you yeah. can see that because the previous photograph would have been the shot of the thing. And then down the side here, it says Kodak 4. It's either II or LL in brackets. And then it says color safety film. Nothing special about that. No, that's a standard thing for Kodak to put on their film. There's something really important to mention here. And that is that these photographs were dropped into an optical printer and rephotographed. So there's going to be two different numbers here. So you're going to have the... Kodak safety film, that's the original. So here's magazine 37. There again is the camera, there is the lens that we're using, and here we're using SO168 160 color reversal, right? High speed. So now this is a different film. This is another off the shelf film that they're actually stating. This is the very first photograph in magazine 37. However, what is this one? here at the bottom 
if this is the first one. If this is the first one, which is this one? There's another photograph there. Yeah, there is. Right? And that is the underside of the ascent stage, right there, the ribbing, is the underside of the ascent stage. Either they just threw a suit up there and accidentally took the picture, or he's actually wearing the suit laying on his back up there to take the picture straight up. But this one here is the first picture here, so there shouldn't be a picture before the first picture. No. And then, of course, we have a picture after the first picture, and I can show that because if you take a look at these little marks right here, that is those marks right there. So it is the following picture. To show that in. That is the second picture on Magazine 37. But the first picture is not the first picture. And of course, this one simply has a huge error because of the size of the earth. Just a tiny little thing. Now they start writing on the side. This is Magazine 39 and it's still on that same Kodak film and they've handwritten the numbers in here and there it is showing it's on safety film again which is not just off to the shelf you see these edges in here you'd almost think that they made an error when they're dropping it in keep thinking that they actually cut the picture out and set it in over the frame I mean they say they're original but you can see all of this evidence that it's not yeah, but don't forget, these were put in an optical printer and re-photographed it, so you're going to have two different films here. You're going to have the original that has safety film in it, and then you're going to also have the re-photographed film, which is these ones that are going to have another number in them. Yeah, and that's exactly what they've done. They so they're not off the original scans, and here again, color safety film on there again, right? This is magazine 40. At the very bottom of this... You can see that they have taken more than one photograph of this image of Magazine 40. This would be the previous image, and that is magazine number just before this, 5970, which is the last ground photograph, and then the chart. If it's going to be on the same roll of film, then that other image that's all messed up should be down here at the bottom, but it's not. This is the same image as this, so it's been bracketed again. That's just whited right out at the top where they overexposed the hell out of it. Right, that image you've got there with, with the chart on it, on the left, there are two lamps. You can see the reflection yeah. on the surface. That's basically a copy table. That is not in space. That well, is there's one, two, two, three, four lamps shooting here. There's it, four in total shooting there. It's a standard way of, of copying an image. What I think's happened here is that they've used the photographic printer, the optical printer, and they've just jumped these into them randomly. Just they've just make jumped sense. it in because there's the two heads there and there and the same shot again. But the previous photograph is this one. If it's on the same film and they shot that, then this one, this one here, would have a piece of the other one down here at the bottom. Yeah, that's been added later. This is not Magazine 40 anymore. There's no way... Okay image was photographed on the lunar surface. No way at all, because it's got electric light. You can see them. But it's not rocket science. And it's been bracketed. They've probably taken this a month before they went, and then later on when they got back and re-photographed this in the optical printer, now this is just thrown well, in Well, there's the date right there. Yeah, 10th of July. Yeah. yeah. yeah a week before they went. That ties in with the other stuff that we found on the Apollo films. How is it the last image on Magazine 40? Optical printer. Yes, added on later, so they're bloody freight. But that's not what they're claiming. They're claiming that that is from the original thing. Here's another one. This is Magazine 43 here. Now they're using high-altitude black-and-white film here. So if they're using this, then why doesn't it say safety film? or safety in there. It should say Kodak Ektachrome 3400 safety panchromatic. Where's the safety in this? There's no film type. I don't see safety written in any of these. No, and here again this lens. There's far too many lenses going on here. They have yeah. a hardware store. Yeah, they got an entire hardware store here. Exactly. Now this is even more interesting. This is magazine 37. Here they are using this high aerial black and white and there are no images on this magazine. 
So how come they're describing it as Kodak ectochrome, black and white? I don't get that. Ectochrome is color, panchromatic is black and white. You don't right. mix the two. So we're going to go to here, to magazine 42, and it says it has no images on here. So there's the start of magazine 42. Now I'm going to scoot across a little bit, and oh, there's an image. There's an image. They're trying to shoot an eclipse. Here's another shot of it. There's one there. Hence the question to Neil Armstrong from Patrick Moore in the press conference, could you see stars through the solar corona? So I looked up solar eclipses on the thing. Apparently yeah. the Earth eclipses the sun on the return voyage of Apollo 12. They never mentioned this eclipse here, this being shot here that they were attempting to do. But don't forget, they clearly state that this magazine has no images on it. And now look at what we get. Oh. There's about a hundred of them here, orbital images on this magazine. Actually, I think they were shooting this from the LEM. It looked like the shadow was on the lunar surface. <laughs> yeah, it could be. But there's about a hundred photographs here, and this is handwritten in, but the safety film comes up when you're scooting through here. There's a safety film on there written, and then there are numbers. The numbers two and five are S star, and anything other than that is not. There we go. Printed number and the other number. Two numbers on the same film. So there you go. Now you have optical printer again. Now you're back into an optical printer, and these magazines are not in the order that they claim they are. The photographs are not in the order that they claim they're in. They've got an entire photo studio here. When you go through all of them, they have the close-up camera, the Hasselblad EL 70 millimeter camera, yep. and there are no reticules in any of these ones. The data cameras have the reticules. There's where the problem is when you come to Magazine 39 because it's on the data camera and it has reticules and it doesn't have reticules. So I have all of the different ones down here. The Panatopic X Aerial ASA is good for 12,000 feet. And then all the rest of these on here, that's the 168, which is off the shelf. This one's medium speed off the shelf. Here's back to the high altitude one on there with a very different lens that you won't see in any of their catalog listings that they have it but it's here right now they're using a 80 millimeter lens yeah that's a high altitude each one of these you imagine they're changing the lens film for each one of these on there okay now all of this film was preloaded so how do they know which cartridge that they're actually grabbing off of the shelf in the LEM or the command module. How do they know? Are they all labeled? You can't just use one type of film to take a bright light outside of the LEM window and then another type of film to take photos on the lunar surface. It has to be the right type of film. It has to have the right ISO number. They just can't go taking any old film off of the shelf and putting it in there. I mean, all of that film had to have been preloaded before they took off in those film containers. And then each one of those Hasselblad film cartridges would have to have a slide in it because it would be exposed. So that means that they're going to be carrying slides in every one of those film magazines until they put it on the camera and it will release. So well, it's just very strange. Well, here's an example of what happened when they were shooting. You get magazine 133, it's black and white, EVA 2. Magazine 134 is EVA 1 and 3. 135 is EVA 2. 136 is EVA 1. 137, EVA 2. 138, EVA 2, right? 39 is 3. 40 is 3. 41 is 3. 42 is 3. 43 is 3. Then you come back to 144 is back to EVA 1 and 2. They're just grabbing these off any which way they want. Here's 145, EVA 2 and 3. These guys were spending more time changing lenses, changing magazines, changing everything. They didn't have time to do any experiments. They must have needed to take a break every now and again when they were doing that. 
they didn't have to take a break to go to have a pee, did they? They could do it in their diapers. When they were shooting this, when they were doing the simulation of this, they can mess around with all of these. But how did you get the magazine 48 and come back to Earth orbit? Wouldn't you shoot the Earth orbit before you went to the moon? Wouldn't yeah, that be the way back up here in the magazine numbers? If somebody, if you got a bean counter saying use this magazine to this magazine, you get the 148 and all of a sudden you're back to Earth orbit and lunar orbit frames. That's on your way there. But that's magazine 48. Well, it shows you the sequence in which they did the simulation, right? Because now they have a whole bunch of ones for lunar orbit, which I'd be figured they wouldn't be taking that many pictures when they're trying to figure out how to land. Would you? No, I think they'd be worried about getting the thing down on the ground, assuming they were actually trying to do that, and it wasn't all done in a simulation exercise. Okay, but you've got one, two, three. 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, and then magazine 54, now we have the translunar coast on your way to the moon. Yep. That's magazine 54. So they set the guy up in the shop with that 20-foot ball doing the lunar orbit frames and gave him these magazines to shoot, and then they set these other guys up in the other room with these magazines and did the translator course where the, yeah. the guy holding the moon up, holding it up on a stick or something and shooting it in front and running around in front of the camera. You know? <laughs> However they did the simulation, you could ask Bart how they did it because, I mean, they, they literally stuck the transparencies on the windows, right, when well, they're doing that. So they this is the order in which they did the simulation. They got that big ball rolling up and did a whole bunch of frames on it. And then they did the translunar coast and then more orbital frames again back. And it just keeps going on like that, right? And they shot a few of the Earth. By the way, any one of these are blacked out. There are no images available for any of these ones that are blacked out down here. There are no images from any of these magazines. Any of the ones that are highlighted in blue are the ones I've clicked on recently. The red show that they have images, but any of the ones, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight in here that do not have any photographs. The landing site, lunar surface features, earth shine photography, all of that. Trans Earth Coast is there, right? That's on the way back kind of thing. But all of those are missing. All of those magazines are missing. And if you're looking at 150 a piece, right, there's quite a few thousand photographs that are missing. Yeah, there are a lot missing. Yeah, and that's just from Apollo 17. Yeah, it, it's such a weird sequence of events that they've listed. But one can only assume that the magazines were not used in the order in which they're shown on those lists. Because surely the trans-Earth coast, are you coming back from the moon, the last sequence is filmed. But it's not, it's right in the middle. And they show the uh, color chart, the calibration chart, they show that in the middle of the film as well. So I could only assume that those, the, the sequence of magazines, numbers, don't bear any relation to the content that they claim to show. That's the whole point of March to the Moon. They were so-called scanning the original photographs right from the original magazines. And right. yet what we've shown here is, first of all, there's nothing special about the film. No, nothing special at all. Standard okay. off-the-shelf Kodak film. Yeah. And secondly, just because it says Magazine 40 doesn't mean the image came from Magazine 40. It could come from any magazine because they're being inserted in. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether it's the color chart or anything else, they're putting it on there. And when you go to the other sites and you see the chart at the end of each magazine, it actually has the date that it was being shot on right there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know anything about cameras, but I don't know how you can take a picture at the end of the roll and then go back and start at the start <laughs> because that's exactly what's happened. Yeah. It's being created to make a story so that somebody without a questioning mind, somebody without looking at it from a logical point of view, will assume, well, that's what NASA say happened, therefore it must be true. 
And all these parrots, people who just repeat what NASA say, assume that what NASA are saying about the photographs and the sequence is correct. It's not. I think you've demonstrated it very clearly. If that's the case, when you mentioned years ago that you would need to bracket a photograph yeah. to get a beautiful one out there, any of those ones with buzz coming down the ladder and that beautiful sequence that you shot, you can now imagine that each one of those photographs were bracketed. Angled to come down to the ground, right? Change the settings, you're going to do a bit of bracketing there and then come back up to buzz again. Yeah. And we can see that this is what they've done with the film, that they've been inserting particular photographs. You can see that there was a previous photograph in there that isn't, isn't actually in there in those photographs. The magazine number is not actually the magazine number. It can be from any magazine they were using. Yeah, of course it was beautiful framed ones for the media. They took their time and bracketed those photographs. Yeah. To do it. There's no way they would do it without doing that.